What's up guys, it's Daz here. But you don't really care as we are jumping away from the garden and into deep, dark galaxy. Once again, because we're not done, obviously. It's time for Bubble Blast Off, since we've already done the purple coin mission and the first one. Now this is gonna take us to more than just the underwater world of Deep Dark Galaxy. Starting off with some pretty goofy music. Um, I guess the trivial note can wait. What's going on over here? We've got a... I heard, I heard this. Undergunner Grunter or something. That Undergrunt Gunner all the way around is keeping us from exploring the area! And so we're hiding behind a parasol. The cannon's been hijacked. Oh, I can't dance anymore. Okay, uh, is there someone on the other side of the beach? <laughs> Yes. He's dreaming about meat. Perfect. Okay. Um, is that chest still over here? I know there's a thing, like, causing havoc on the beach and all, but I really need to know. No? Yes? No, I don't need it anyway. So, just do what you normally do. He's nice and short, so I can just... Hack him down with a triple jump. And somehow with dodges bubbles. Yeah. Oh, I missed. Hold on. Nope. No, he's going to use his shock. There we go. You too, buddy. Oh, god damn it. How did I know that was going to hit? Okay. Oh, there's the music that I'm used to. Right. Right back to xylophones, marimbas. I think these are the marimbas. I don't know. Oh, you're actually getting tricky now. That's not fair. No, that's not what I wanted. No, that's not what I wanted. No, that's not what I wanted. There we go. There you go, you ran out of bubbles. I was gonna say bullets, they're not quite bullets. And get out of here. Right, what do you have to say now in the nice peaceful land? Cannons are a blast. Thank you, now we can get on with our survey. Your voice changes every video, I swear. Oh well, right. And where? Oh, there he is, okay. What do you say? The same thing, still dreaming about meat, nothing changed, okay. Um, I don't think there's anything in the miniature gateway. But there is this tree. Well, that's a concussion. I don't know why I decided to do that, I just felt like it. Um, okay. Well, that just opened the gates anyway, so I'm, I'm not really sure if that planet was needed at all. Okay, so we're basically going to be going higher up in the island this time, and a trivial note there is to find is, I believe in this mission, or at least in general it, well no, in the whole, all the missions, but it's only more accessible in this one, there is a launch star really high up. If you fly in it, it will take you to space and kill you, and then respawn you in space and kill you, until you get game over. If you freeze the jets of water, you can use them. Get up above. Okay, that means there's an ice flower around here. Except there isn't. Um, I don't remember where Ice Mario is, so I think I might just speed things up until I find it, because I cannot remember for the life of me. Also, while we're speeding up, a little trivial note that I uh, didn't quite finish, so to say, about the Deep Dark Galaxy is you can use the cannon to fly into the underwater ghost ship area uh, by just shooting above the main entrance. If you do that, you'll get stuck there because the place is locked off and Camilla won't appear to let you disappear when you get the Power Star. Even if you die and come back, you'll still be in that area, so not good, don't do it. That trivia note is specifically if you do that trick in Mission 2, the one we're in right now. Okay, so I don't even remember this out of being smart. It literally, memory was the only thing keeping me going, and it's really bad design. You need Fire Mario to hit these two pedestals, and just one extra one that's at the back now to get an ice flower. Really obscure, really bad design. No wonder I struggled. Uh, 
Okay, well, this is the way you're supposed to do it, and now everything's gonna fit into place nice and easily. I mean, I doubt we need any more Ice Mario after that. It's literally just for that one jet bit, so you do that one pedestal bit. Also, no, stop. Get out of here, you. I don't know. The rest is just normal Mario platforming, which is okay from now. I just didn't like how you needed a nice Mario for a single tiny element of this level. And it was the most obscure way to get it ever. Not good. Ooh, that's cool though. Okay. Right, now these uh, water jets, they are reminiscent of Flood from Super Mario Sunshine. They've basically just become the figure design for anything water-based. Which is fair enough. Or fire-based, apparently. If they ever made another sunshine, they better do a jet that spits fire, because it's canon in Galaxy, at least. And we're supposed to use these, actually, to make some progress. With a well-timed jump. Bit of a miracle it went the, the right way, but oh. Anyway, meet Cheep Cheeps. They are the fish of this world. How have we not seen them before? I have not a clue. But we're seeing them for the first time now, and they're actually kind of lethal. I imagine this is how magic, uh, Magikarp would actually kill you in real life. Just bouncing forever until they smack you in the face kind of uncomfortably. Right, well, that's enough of this weird excuse for a planet. This feels like Mario Galaxy Generator or something. Anyway, now we're here. And you might be wondering, well, <laughs> what the heck is this? How do you make it work? Let's ask Toad. There's a power star hidden inside that watermelon! You just grab half smelt tennis balls, hit the bottom end to get that power star. Seriously, what sort of idea of a mechanic is this? To get this power star, you have to hit tennis balls into watermelons. And it just happens to make the watermelon way bigger than any mass or volume that the tennis balls would be giving it. I don't know why this is a thing, how this, this just feels like Super Mario Maker for Galaxy. Like this feels like such a weird obscure puzzle that someone made. Oh well. The tennis balls are on a set route, so just wait in the right place and they'll come to you. I think that one's just following that bar there, so this should be nice and easy. And so, even though it's like only a third of the size of this planet, this last tennis ball, it's not even that big breaks the entire thing, and also partially electrocutes me, apparently. Oh, I don't know how this game works sometimes. Mario and watermelons, never really the best combination. And that's our first star after 13 minutes. Ooh. I believe that's our first, yeah. Alright, getting close to a hundred. The cursor, can you please there we go. Well, I guess we're jumping right back in. We're going to the Daredevil comment. Okay. Oh, I know what this is. Ghost Ship Daredevil Run. Oh boy. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be a long one. I never actually mentioned the translations of the last mission. This one's not very interesting. It's just gonna be however they say Daredevil Run and however they say Ghost Ship. It's not gonna be very interesting. But uh, the last mission that we just did, we have three translations. Japanese call it the Skywalk with Water Shooters. Spanish call it the Flight Seeing, the Flight Flight Seeing with Water Shooters, or Aerial Tour with Water Shooters. And Italians call it Aerial Walk with Water Shooters. Everyone calls them Water Shooters. How unimaginative. Hey, Camilla. Why do I have a feeling I'm gonna have trouble with you? Is it because I had trouble with you when I wasn't even trying? Or was trying at one... whatever. Okay. First hit down. Ain't that easy. Look at this vignette around the screen. You can't see the corners of the screen. Ain't that crazy. It's not coloured though, I swear it's just a black vignette. I mean, I could be... I wouldn't know. But, um, it doesn't look like they've put much of a colouring on it. This is supposed to be a white comet. So I'd expect there to be like a white tinge on everything, but I don't see it. If it did have a white tinge, it would look like my old, uh, blind playthrough effects. Because that had vignettes on it. A very white and bloomy vignette. Alright, you guys, get out of here. 
You give me enough trouble when I have 6 HP. So, go. Right, that's fire. That's great. Huh? Why did I do that? I was too busy looking at Camilla for a moment, being like, oh, that must be a green shell coming up next. It wasn't. Well, this seems like a good a time as any to distract myself with a conversation story topic thing, because I had a story that I was going to say that I was going to mention this episode because I said that last episode. This wonderful little note that says, Frog Lady on the Train. Camilla looks a bit like a frog lady, so I'm going to say it's relevant. So, the other day, a couple weeks ago actually, at this point really, so not really the other day, um, I was coming home from South End because an event happened, you heard this many times before, and in public, I look kind of outstanding. Not like a, oh, I'm so good looking. <laughs> no, I very much don't give off the kind of personality my voice has. For a start, like clothing wise, I'm not very fun. I mean, at the moment, I have a brown leather jacket that I'm in love with, and then I wear usually brightly coloured skinny jeans, and then I almost permanently have headphones, just little Apple headphones, in my ears, and then a face of d death. How fitting. The face of just, like, anger and concentration. I very much, when I'm out in public, doing my own thing, am very focused on I need to go this way, I'm gonna put on a grumpy face until I get there, sort of thing. So, I don't give off, like, a very friendly demeanour sometimes. It also depends on the music I'm listening to. So, I just happen to be sitting on this train. Um, the seats are usually, like, double seats, so there's always two on each side. And I only take up one, because I'm not the kind of guy that leaves bags over the chair. Though I did have a ton of bags with me, so it was all at my feet, that was fun. And so, this couple, or not couple, this family, mini family, that were going obviously to visit their family for Christmas. So it was only like, three or four people, like, a, a woman, a man, an old woman, and probably just another man, I can't remember. Um, they were all trying to sit in. The train was very busy because there was a lot of people in it, because a very boring detail that another train was delayed and whatever. Um, so this lady, the old lady in the family, decided to sit next to me. Uh, but that's fine. Um, like I'm, I don't, I don't talk. I'm not moody. I don't. Uh, the worst thing I might do is they might hear me breathing because I'm a heavy breather. Like wow, crazy. And this woman was very much like. And I hope I'm not like insulting like the disabled. I hope she's not disabled. I no, nah, she's probably fine. Um, the one thing that was a bit like outstanding about her really was she had these. Big glasses, like the kinds that like magnify your eyes, sort of thing. So she looked like something out of Willy Wonka or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Or like, it's, there's a character in my mind from some TV show or film that's in my head, but I don't know what it is. Um, maybe it's Matilda. I don't know. But she had like these massive eyes anyway, and it was just the effect of her glasses. And that's fair enough. You know, people look cool. People look funny. It happens. Um, but she was very much like the kind of old lady type where she didn't seem to be too intact with reality. She'd very much be just sort of staring into space. So I'm just sitting in there minding my own business, like staring out the window all whimsically or whatever. And I just wanted to check my phone because it's in my pocket. There you go. Um, now, I'm, a, I'm not entirely up with the modern times in devices. I'm still living in the age of having two devices in a pocket, one being a phone and one being an iPod. I don't, I mean, I have Spotify, but I don't have it on my phone, so I just use my iPod instead for music. So I go into my pocket and I take out these two devices. One is just a, not even a big, just a Samsung Galaxy in one hand, and the other is just a dinky little iPod with headphones that are attached to my ears. Crazy. Well, it doesn't sound very crazy. This old lady thought it was crazy, because there's this gif that exists on the internet that like has a couple toads actually mm. uh, as pets uh, I'll see if I can find it up uh, there's two toads a fly falls down and the toad hits the other toad instead of hitting the fly and then they look around each other all jittery it's very like weird and like the way their brains work is weird this old lady seemed to have the exact same mannerisms no offense of a toad or a frog because she didn't just like turn or move her eye to look at these strange devices she'd never seen. She just sort of <laughs> with her whole body 
and like dived her head. What was that like? Six inches away from these things that I was trying to look at. And so for a moment, I'm just here trying to look at these dinky little devices. And I've just got this old lady like back straight leaning over these devices incredibly it was incredibly fast too i didn't think like i would have thought like the, the lady snapped her back in the process but that's what she did and then i thought okay that's weird that's cool she then snaps right back and then just her head snaps to look at me like with bewilderment of what what is this she then like snaps her head down to like look at her own knees and it's just like it's like her mind disappeared for a moment and she was just staring at her knees nothing going on in the head I hope it was just emptiness and then she turned back and then she'd just be silent and it was like it was like the sudden movement of like me being all curled up looking against the window and suddenly not even quickly just smoothly taking out devices and stunned her and she had to look at the moving thing and it was so weird because she also continued to do this occasionally when I was occasionally checking my phone like if it's a text from my mum being like oh come home soon man. like every time I take out my pocket she just Ooh! and she'd stare uncomfortably long like four seconds not long time but it feels like forever she was like a toad hooking and hooking around everywhere and just like barely speaking and these massive eyes don't help so that's my adventure sitting on a train for two hours with a frog lady she was weird and if she's got some mental disability that made her do that then i apologize for making a little story out of her but like i've never seen anything like it before and i hope that gift that I find, if I find it, really well wraps up together just how she was. Anyway, that's us done for now. So uh, next time, we'll get to 98 stars and, I don't know, see what else there is to see. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.